Well, hello everybody, Mr. O here, and I have to apologize for the glare. I know people don't like me apologizing. They think I'm doing just great, but um, because I'm using shiny scratch art paper, um, whether it's on the surface here or it's the silver, uh, there's some, depending on where the light's hitting, there could be a glare, and I do apologize for that. Uh, uh, sometimes no matter what you do, you don't have the right lighting for that. So this is just the beginning basics of scratch art. And as you can see, uh, we're going back to doing an animal and you've seen me do this picture and others. This is a photo I took from Google. And again, if you use a photo, please remember that that's for practice you should be using uh, your own photos or ones that artists have put in, photographers have put in for open source to use uh, so you can do images. And that way, if you do something great, you can submit it. As you can see, I did the pencil sketch and then I had done a charcoal video. If you haven't seen that one, uh, you can go look for the char beginning charcoal. As you can see, it's not very much and you'll get the same thing kind of uh, out of the scratch art. I'll show you some examples of the scratch art though. Um, early, when I taught elementary, and believe it or not, I used to do this lesson with the elementary kids. Uh, my ki my students would, uh, uh, they were stunned by that. Um, I had done a full owl. And uh, as you can see, the feathers were done in many different techniques. Now, I'm gonna warn you on this type of paper, even though it's thick, we use a wooden stylus, scratch uh, stylus. I think I use the thick wooden ones, but the, they look like crayons, but longer, uh, just sharpened wood. And um, it was much easier to scratch. The paper we're gonna use, and I'm gonna go over the tools, are gonna use scratch knives, which are metal. Now, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you some student examples. And I always recommend to them that they do fur. Now, of course, they don't always listen to that, which is great. Um, but if you're learning textures and it's always easier with scratch art to do something in fur, here's a phenomenal one. Look at the direction of the fur. Now, is everything perfect? No, I'm gonna tell you why. Here will be the hardest thing to translate into scratch art. Um, and then I got this example. Uh, they did a beautiful koi fish and uh, it took a little while, but if you can probably figure out, the key to scratch art is drawing opposite. Not only is it a pen and ink project, I know that's, uh, we're so used to drawing the black on, here we draw the white. And as beautiful as this is, the biggest mistake on this picture is they did an outline. They weren't confident in themselves where you have this where you don't have the harsh outline now the next picture everyone um, I always have a few students who always do pandas and this is the first time let me do it the right way I had a panda done correctly we're using a matte which is meaning it doesn't a non-reflective black surface and with that blackness um, you need you should want to incorporate that bring in that shadow and that this is what makes this so successful you don't see the outline uh, with the black you just you see the hint of it it's drawing without drawing and they did a great job of everything that was truly drawn and scratched away was the white the opposite uh, if you look at the eyes, and I will tell you, as I, as I told you, the uh, don't outline, you're not gonna be able to outline and stuff like that, but there are always exceptions and eyes I find to be an exception, but they did a great job. Um, I really, really think highly of this panda. Pandas and, and butterflies, maybe penguins too, everyone chooses to do them thinking that they're easy and they're truly not. If you on them and you want to do them correctly. Now here's my example, a previous example. I'm going to use this as a sketch paper and then I got a kind of a rough one, one that I must have been on the surface and 
students nicked and uh, smudged up, which is good, is okay. Because what I'm using is a scratch board, but it's more like a Bristol board. And um, with the Bristol board, uh, of course, I have to use scratch knives. And like I said, I'll, I'll go over these in a second. Now there is a harder scratch board and uh, much more expensive. Uh, right now, like this paper with the silver, or they even come with gold, uh, it costs about approximately like a dollar a sheet. Um, if you can get a cheaper, great. Um, and there's also thin, cheapy paper that you can use uh, uh, the wooden stylus with that are even cheaper than that uh, glitter paper that I had. But you gotta be careful, it tears really easy. Um, and then of course they have the pre-made scratch paper where you just scratch away and already has an image. Um, I'm gonna tell you, you don't learn from that. Uh, we're getting into the time where things are done for you. No matter how bad something may look, uh, it's best to learn to do it well. And in a few years, not only can you do it well, uh, you can surpass what you're trying to. So I'm gonna use my image. I'm gonna put this off to the side. As you can see, I'm gonna orient my paper this way. And, and I'll have my photo uh, um, also handy. Um, so this paper is gonna be ready, but let me just kind of introduce you to the tools too. So the, the, the scratch knives I'm gonna use are gonna be these two. Most likely just one of them, but each of them uh, has a little bit of a different effect. As you can imagine, this is gonna be a thinner line and it is called scratch art. So you do just scratch away. And because the knives are nice and taken well care of, it's really easy. Now, this one is going to be thinner and I can do, if I go quickly, I can actually do a different type of hair. And this is, you'll notice that it, it doesn't scratch as deep through the black, but it's still scratching the black. I don't know if you can get that reflection. Um, it's a much thinner line. So be aware of what you're, what you're taking. Um, and you can realize I like the rounded blade to kind of get things started. So you'll see me do this one. Uh, this one is a finer and you will need that. Um, so I'm gonna put this off to the side. Now, other scratch tools out there that we will, like I'm not gonna use on this project. You have a multiple, let me move this paper down. And you can see where this one, you can do a nice fur texture. Um, like if I was doing a line, I definitely do the main in this. Um, now, look at the powder, all the black, but you gotta be careful, one wrong stroke or too much of a stroke, it's harder to fix. And yes, you could scratch, uh, you could fix scratch paper. Now we have this one, it has a, the plastic stylus, hard plastic, and then it has the needle. Now this is better for uh, the actual scratch board because if I press too hard, which it would be easy to do, I'd go right to the white. Uh, so we do have uh, this available. And then finally, um, I know many of you might have found this. These things are all over, but very few people use them. Um, you have the ability to uh, make lines, um, multiple lines at the same time. And that comes with this scratch tool. And it does have a single point where you can actually do um, a lot of your scratch art with just that point and then come in with that. I am not an expert in this tool. I remember doing a long time ago, it might've been in college where I've used that one and it went. So I'm gonna put this aside and I'm going to start, I'll, I'm going to go back to that one, but um, I wanna get this started. And what I do, for me, the eyes are the most important thing of any picture. People can disagree with that and I'm okay with that. And I start with the eye. Now you would think I do both eyes at the same time. I do not. I actually do a spiral. So you'll only see me do the one eye and then I'll start going out. And um, so probably would be maybe better for a time lapse, but I have a feeling you're gonna wanna see how I do um, a lot of it. And this is where, like, like I said, this is where I get the exception 
of, you know, doing a little bit of an outline and the white of the eye. This is what I'm taking out here. And then I want to be very careful with this line. As you can see, it's a little bit like drawing. And then within the pupil, I'm going to start figuring out how I'm going to do the gleams. And I, I, I'm over exaggerating the curve of the gleams a little bit to help me give me um, the roundness of the eye. And this will get me started. Now I'm probably going to go back in, do some detailing. I think like usually I hold my head a little bit closer when I get into the finer de details um, and I can't do that with the camera. All you'll see is the back of my head and I don't think you want to see the back of my head. You might want to see the back of my head and I can post that sometime. And then I'm gonna go and I'm gonna just start. Now since I'm into the black fur um, and look at the direction. Direction is very important in these projects whether you're doing this or charcoal. And I always recommend to students, I think I mentioned this already, to do like a furry animal. Um, the reason fur is, is a great texture to learn at first is, I'm getting into the white here, um, is because it's a little easier. And then you grow into feathers or you just start doing feathers. And then um, you just start uh, doing scales. I'll tell you what reptiles are amazing you would think it and, and the texture is hard but it's so rewarding to do uh, like you saw that koi fish i guarantee you if she does that one more time or because that was a student work uh what i showed you um or if she does it um a couple more times um i said i think i said two so one or two more times sh she she'll have the confidence not to do the outline, as you can see. Now, I hope this makes sense why I would do a spiral pattern. Um, because as I go around, you know, I just keep kind of going, I build. And doing a spiral actually helps me when it comes to keeping the eyes straight. Now, in the beginning of learning this, did I get the eyes a little crooked, even off size? Absolutely. Um, now, does that mean I didn't try to do a better job? Of course I try, um, but you're gonna make mistakes. And notice how I'm, I'm just kind of making these, this little bit of fur, because it's more black, a little shorter. Now I'm gonna switch and I'm gonna kind of show you how I kind of start rotating. And this is older, this, this demonstration I probably started maybe, uh, gosh, it could be 10 years ago. So I'm just jumping in on this. And as I kind of work up the, to the fur, the ear, uh, it's all fur, um, I just want to start leaving some more of the black because this was, was a different kind of raccoon and it could have had white and black in different locations. So just don't assume when something's like even a panda, those, the white and black is very important, just like an orca, because it, 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 it changes what they are and who they are. That's how you identify them. And changing direction of the fur sometimes will help you. And I'm gonna get this ear down here. As you can see, it's just easy peasy with the scratching. Uh, didn't think I'd ever use easy peasy in the uh, um, uh, videos. Sorry, stuttering there. Um, and apologizing again. Um, so I do recognize that uh, I do appreciate when people make good comments and I'm, I'm uh, you know, feedback is very important. And sometimes even when people give me negative feedback that they don't like something, I take that and I try to do better. Um, so guys, I hope this is giving you a start. Um, I could, and maybe I will, um, no promises. Uh, I just wanted to get this video out because uh, my students kind of need it, um, just to get uh, something going. Uh, but maybe I'll time lapse the rest of this and, and you guys can see the finished product. Um, like I said, no promises on that. 
Uh, so I hope this gives you a better idea of where it's ultimately going to go. Um, hey, I want you guys to know you are loved. Now, some of you who are going to work on this are going to be very frustrated how I, would, I wrote that very easily because if you have the wrong touch, you learn touch over time. I've done this demonstration many times, so if you're out there, let me encourage you to don't make a judgment on something the first two times you do it. It's good to experiment. If you can get yourself scratch paper, you can make your own scratch paper. Maybe that's one I should do. And of course, you can buy your own. Um, so guys, have a great day. Bye-bye. <laughs>